All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Backwoods Life Podcast. I think I'm on episode 73. I'm trying to keep up, Larry. You know, when you get old, you can't count anymore. I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I got my good buddy, longtime friend. We've known each other, I don't even know how many years. Now, when you get old, you can't count anymore. Just like I said, this has been a long it's time. Long time. <laughs> it's long time. <laughs> long, long, long time. <laughs> uh, my buddy, Larry McCoy. Um, Larry's kind of like me. He's been on both sides of the fence in the outdoor industry for uh, probably as long as I, at least 20 years. I mean, me yep. and you both. Um, on the marketing advertising side, on the television side, on the social media side now, on the YouTube side with Respect the Game and Outdoor Group and, and their umbrella of brands. Um, Larry and I have worked together on just tons of stuff over the years. So I know you've been on here before, Larry, but welcome back, buddy. Yeah, thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we're finally connected. <laughs> finally, finally. This and this and for those of y'all listening or watching this, like this is a crazy time of the year for us in the hunting world because hunting seasons are pretty much over. There's a little bit of, you know, you can still go shoot hogs, maybe some snow geese and stuff like that in, in February. But um as far as deer go, it's pretty well, I take that back. You can shoot them in Texas and stuff in Arkansas, I think stuff still now, but they're losing yeah. antlers left and right. <laughs> You know, right, right. even ours here in georgia they're dropping antlers so i don't even i don't know it's it's wild but but between this time of the year is finishing tur hunting season plant or deer season whatever planning for turkey season and trying to get all these trade shows out of the way that's a fact yep it, the schedule it, is full i do now stop, let's talk about hunting for a second now there is a i don't know whether the season's open or not but i'm going to claim destruction of property i got this gray squirrel He's wreaking yeah. havoc on the corner of my house right now. I'm gonna hunt him down, and we're gonna take care of it. He might end up in the crock pot. <laughs> hey, man, squirrel and dumplings. I swear, I'm it's, telling you, I'm, a, I'm all about I, it. I, I tell you, I tell everybody right now, they're like, oh, I'm not gonna eat a tree rat. I'm like, have you ever had one? No. Well, don't knock it till you try it. Squirrel ain't bad. No, it, it's not. I didn't get this fabulous body by not eating. I can tell you that. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, Open invitations on the food side right. here. You fry up some squirrel legs. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, squirrel season is still in here in Georgia until the end of February too. So yeah. I mean, we could go do that. I had I had 15 turkeys in my yard this morning. Oh, so, did you? Yeah, they're six jakes and some hens. But I'm like, hey, <laughs> watch it. Yeah, exactly. You better, watch. You better watch it. Yeah, no, I, no, I'm not gonna say I'd kill one out of season, but if he comes and attacks me in my driveway, I mean, yeah, exactly. Gotta you defend, gotta defend myself. You got to defend yourself. I, my the wife was just checking the mail, and here he comes. Yeah. So there yeah. we go. I'm protecting my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but um, yeah, man, Larry, Larry. I, well, I know we we talk often, but um, I wanted to pat you guys on the back for real for um just rolling youtube this year man like would y'all up to like three hundred thousand subscribers now or yeah like three hundred eighteen thousand, i think and it just kind of it just kind of turned on you know with the shorts and paul paul biggs and ryan uh you know part of the show we just you know they uh they poured the gas on and we were just going through content after content and and uh just resurfacing stuff and and, and a lot of stuff, you know, had never been seen, you know, you get into the groove of production season for the show and, you know, you're used to looking at that footage that's on the show. And when you start going through the whole gamut of what was filmed and captured on this trip or that trip that a lot of people don't see, well, that honestly, that's a lot of stuff that, that that's on our YouTube. So, uh, and it's, it's been received really well and we're, we're definitely blessed to, for it to blow up like it, like it has. And, uh, it's been a fun ride. That's for sure. We're going to keep, we're going to keep trucking because you know no matter what platform on social media i'm telling you what you can hit a wall <laughs> you can hit a wall and feel like very very easy, <laughs> man. like this and, like you ain't doing and, anything right and and you know i mean every social media platform and and in, in this industry we're in we've got to hustle and we've got to get as many eyeballs for our content and that's exactly how we do it we work social really hard on top of you know making the video production side and rolling out on network and linear sides and digital mm -hmm. side streaming everything we can and for those of y'all watching and listen respect the game tv is is larry paul and ryan's baby over there those guys do a great job they're some of the most i, I ain't gonna lie man some of the best bow hunting footage out there um anyway y'all check it out especially on their youtube because they got tons of great content over there but um I will say you've got to work each system differently. You got all these obstacles. You get red flags on stuff we post all the time. 
you get antis coming out. And that's the thing I've noticed on YouTube. If you're really doing YouTube right, because because we got lucky this year, we hit a good stride. I mean, I'm kind of following y'all's lead. I was like, hey, let's let's see what you guys are doing and let's run with some of that stuff too. And um, you know, we're at 100, and I think around 150 now. Um, mm -hmm. But with that being said, if when you start striding right on YouTube, the antis are everywhere. Oh, they are everywhere. I, I mean, you could go through some of the videos and look at the comments on there. And um, I mean, part of me wants to really respond, but but <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, oh my, it's like, it's like <laughs> so, some of them will be like, um, Crazy. like I like I, I try to title stuff where it's gonna make people watch. You know, I, I mean, yeah. I do stuff like like best bow shot ever. Right. It, knowing right. all it is is a really good shot. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. we ten we ten ring a doe, but we call it the best bow shot ever, right. just to get people to look at it and see if they think it's that really good and it's a good shot and all. But people will be like. Uh, you know, dime a dozen on YouTube, and I'm like, yeah, just like your comment. You know, I want I fire right, back exactly, right, right. stuff like that. Um, right. But some of them are like, I hope you burn and die just like this deer with a shot to your <laughs> head. I'm like, well, okay, thank you. Report that's that you, know, yeah, you just exactly. got flagged. You just got flagged for threatening somebody. Good, good job there. Keyboard some of the jockey. best ones, yeah. Some of the best ones are I get a kick out of like a bow shot, and literally you watch, you know, you watch a deer run off forty yards and just you know, somersault just or fall over like, horrible shots. Like, I know it's so bad he died. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, right. It's like, it's so bad he died. Um, oh, and, and, and I segue into that to uh, get it, get kind of into the meat and potatoes here with this podcast for a minute. Um, Cause I, like I told you before we started recording that I'm just going to, I got some topics from YouTube. So I'm just going to spitball a couple of these out there and we'll go we'll run with them. This what we're talking about is the number one on my topic list. It says, let's talk about jealousy slash little man syndrome slash self-proclaimed shooting experts or whatever it is that causes some post idiotic some to post idiotic comments on deer video clips with perfectly lethal shot placement. That's exactly <laughs> what we're talking about right there. Yeah, right. Uh, we, I mean, we've that that's a great topic because I just can't explain it. You know, it's like you 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 just watched it. You watched and you know that, okay, most of them, what I've seen, it's been on a quarter and shot or something where, you know, you intend to hit the animal back because you're looking through the animal. If you get an exit, you want it to exit behind the front shoulder or, or go through his vitals at some point. But so if you enter an animal back rib and it comes out right behind the shoulder, everybody, think, you know, I mean, they, they come out like of the woodwork. It's like horrible shot, horrible <laughs> shot. Like, yeah, I mean, he literally, he's laying there dead, you know? Yeah, we watched him fall. Like, what, <laughs> what do you want me to do? You know? <laughs> and and that's like, like you, you and I were talking the other day and, and I, I shot a buck um, earlier this past deer season and he was quartering to me just a little bit. Um, and I, and there's a few people like, oh, you're quartering or whatever. I mean, the deer went 80 yards and I watched him fall over, but people don't understand the, the equipment nowadays too. Like that's got a lot to do with why we make the shots and at the angles that we're confident in, because like with the torch broadhead, cause you know, we, we both talked about that other day with slick trick torches. Like there's such a big, heavy hitting broadhead with a two inch cut in diameter. I mean, they're going to punch a hole in and out. And, and and like one hater on the videos that I posted, uh, I, I sent it to you guys and and, and uh, Slick Trick posted on their Instagram and stuff was that doe I shot, you know, a couple, a uh, few weeks ago, whatever, in January. Um, that like it's the, it's shish kebab the deer is what I call it. Like yeah. my, air, my ears are, you know, 33, 34 inch arrows and a deer's <laughs> body is only like 18, 20 inches yeah. wide. So it, there, there's like arrows sticking out both sides of the deer blood just flying out and then people are like well you didn't get a pass through <laughs> i'm like I don't, people can look at that differently i mean i'm just saying pass through to me if i got an exit hole that's good enough for me because uh and that torch specifically it's like even if you don't because the blades lock open on that broadhead so every move that animal makes you're cutting something you know and so it's i mean it, it is definitely lethal as they come and as and as us as bow hunters like you said we're we're taking shots at those especially that quarter and away angle we're trying to hit that other shoulder that's right. like our goal if you go in one side and you hit the shoulder on the other side whether it passes through or not you just crush that one like that yeah exactly they can't they can't live long yeah, with that they can't corner. take it they can't take it that 100 percent. i think i have one of my 
uh, we were joking around and I, I commented on a post. It was, I think it was one T-bone poster or whatever. I commented on there because everybody was getting on him about a shot. It was a quarter two shot. And, and I mean, literally just summer, you're just somersaults, you know, it's a doe as well. And I just put, uh, everybody's on there and I just put dead is dead. You know, <laughs> dead is dead is dead. And T Bone, uh, yeah, T Bone responded, Larry Max got the, the best broadhead slogan ever. I'm like, oh, I'm trademarking it. Do <laughs> it, do it. Copyright dead right dead. now. Dead is dead. dead, is dead. And so. that's a fact. Like, that's the thing. Like, um, I posted a video that we shot actually with our friends, Bonnie and Mike, with Legend of the Fall out in Texas. My wife, Beth, goes out there with me and she was rifle hunting and she shot a buck. And, um, you know, in the food plot, you know exactly where the food plot's at. Mm -hmm. He shot a buck there. And I mean, it, you, it, it's crazy what our camera gear can do now. That's what I'm going to say with that. Because it, it's what you see, even in the video, is not what your brain is trying to right. tell you is happening. Uh -huh. So when she shoots this deer, and deer's like 50 yards, shoots him with a 6.5 six, six, Creedmoor. And you can see the reflection of the sun on the bullet. Like that's how awesome these camera lenses are now That's so you crazy. can see the the sun reflecting on that copper bullet you can see the bullet go in the deer but what happens is you have a point of impact which is she was perfect right through the shoulder but you see like almost like dust and fur wrinkle forward towards the deer's neck on the shot and it happens so fast like even in slow motion you can see it but it's still really fast um and people are like oh you shot that one through the neck Oh, you, you know, that was a bad, you got lucky. You ruined me. That's what ruined me. Right. You really right. think when I'm trying to shoot a buck, I, I I mean, yes, meat is the byproduct of that. But that, trust me, if I shoot one through the shoulder or I shoot one in the neck, there's a bunch of meat to the south. Yeah. End of that deer <laughs> exactly. that I can get off of that thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah. Stuff like that. But, but my point with that video is she shoots this deer. He jumps up, rears up in the air, hits the ground, goes like one leap buries his antler in the ground and does a somersault falls over mm. he's digging turnips as old kip <laughs> would say on that thing yeah <laughs> and just dirt and crap goes flying everywhere and the deer lays dead as a hammer like done and and dude the hate i mean it got like tons and tons of hundreds of thousands of views on social media but everybody's like well you you know just you wasted me you didn't hit where you was aiming well, who cares you just watched yeah. the fit deer die within 10 yards exactly. first of all it? yeah and that's what I want. I mean, one thing I want to know, I'm like, man, we're all human. The thing is too, is there's, there's instances where we've been out and yeah, we, you know, we hit a deer bad, you know, and it's not like we meant to, you know, right. it's, not, it's not like we meant to, it's like, right. it happens. but that's one thing that people ask me to, uh, as it pertains to broadheads and the same, no different than like best experience. It's not like, even if she would hit it in the neck, if he died, he died, you know, right there. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's not like maybe that's not where she was aiming and something. I mean, we're all human. So, but defining a broadhead to me is like to help kind of, it's almost like an insurance policy, Yeah. you know, because I know that I could shoot a bow decently well. I know that I'm confident with my equipment, but things happen. And for when those things happen, I want a broadhead that can help cover my butt when they do. And that's, I think we were talking before, and that's what I was talking to you about the torch. I said, that's because the blades lock open for rear deploy broadhead. When it's in that cavity, it's always cutting. I've seen some pretty bad shots with that, uh, just being in camps and letting people shoot them and, and the deer die, uh, you know, because it's gotten into the cavity and, and, and die pretty darn quick. So that's kind of how I define a, a broadhead. I mean, they've, they got to fly good. And if they can kind of help, help uh, me for, correct some of my mistakes uh and the animal still die that's a heck of a lot better than one running out there freaking you know wounded so well you hit the nail on the head i mean the first thing i want to say on that is like we don't we don't try to make bad shots it's like you don't want to give up the give up the walk off home run to lose the world series but it right. does happen right i mean right. you didn't exactly. do it on purpose so we're not trying right. you know we're not, i didn't try to miss that deer six inches back i mean you hit a limb you you torquing in the stand i mean there's all kind of scenarios that you you're just trying to you, you get caught in situations you're just trying to be reactive and let your training do the best you can um but like you said though having a broadhead with like a big two inch cut in diameter 
you miss an inch or two to the right or to the left, and you still have an inch cut on both sides of that point of impact, mm-hmm. that right. still get like you said, it helps you out. Mm-hmm. So, and and that's what people don't understand. I mean, it, it's all about your equipment more than anything. And having a forgiving bow is one thing that I learned the hard way through years mm-hmm. of bow hunting. Is like what what's the old saying? Uh, a, a slow kill is better than a fast miss. You know, I yep. mean, just <laughs> talking about speed of the bows and all that kind of stuff, and and energy kills, and I mean, there's all kind of stuff out there. We could go down to the bow hunting pigeonhole with with those things, but it's really the shooter being confident in their equipment, but also having equipment that allows you to be human, you know, and rifles the same way. I mean, if you're sitting there with a rifle with a 10 pound trigger pull, you're probably not going to be as accurate as one of us sitting over here with a one pound trigger pull. I mean, it's just your equipment makes you better or worse. Like Tiger Woods could go beat Tiger Woods could go beat me at golf with a boat paddle. I mean, he's got the skills, (laughs) but at the end of the day, if I can get really good clubs and he's got to use a boat paddle, I'm going to catch up with him a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, yeah. But, so I don't know. I don't know. I could uh, shoot. He could probably beat me without a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be looking for a paddle to just go get my balls out of the water. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> oh man! All right, we're gonna shift gears. I'm gonna throw another topic out there. This is just okay. totally random, bro. Okay. Wrestling and how great it used to be. Man, <laughs> hey, that's that's a true statement. That's a true was, statement. It was kind of, wasn't it wrestling back then. It was wrestling, but man, you had uh, you had a uh, hacksaw Jim Duggan, you had Randy. This is Randy Macho Man. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We had had the American Dream, Dusty yeah, Rose. Dusty Rose. I mean, yeah. Rick Flair. I mean, like th- that's back when. Like now, don't get me wrong. These guys are. I'm not saying the guys back then were weren't athletes because you had to be a tough dude to do right. this at any point in 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 time but back then it was more about being able to execute but being the personality like being right. over the top with it and now like these guys are physical specimens that are out yeah. there you know but, <laughs> right. and they still got to have the, the personality and the character you know to do these things but i mean it seems like back when we were younger man it was just you had like six or eight just heavy hitters that like that's why you're watching and now there's a it's a bigger thing right it's a broader and i don't watch wrestling hardly at all anymore but i do i do see stuff that comes through instagram and all that and i saw i still like uh well in college um in the early 2000s when i was you know in college finishing up college um i think that's right crap i don't know i'm so old i don't even (laughs) remember when that was but man we would literally have like that was back when you had uh was it wwe and uh wwf yeah, there were two different ones, right? Yeah, WCW. WWF, I think it's WCW. WCW. Yeah, you WWF. Got two different ones before they before they joined up. And dude, we would have Monday night nitro parties yeah. at our house in college, and then we'd have whatever the, ne- the other one was like Thursday nights or something. And dude, I mean, we'd have like forty guys in our old duplex just watching freaking wrestling. Yeah. I mean, just dumb stuff. But I mean, dude, it was so much fun, and and I remember. You know, having like The Rock when The Rock first came out, mm-hmm. and I was watching a video on Instagram the other day, and because The Rock's still around, man, like dude's fifty whatever, man, it's yeah. still just a <laughs> yeah. beast, right? So, but yeah, you know, they they were they were showing reactions the other day. He he's doing some uh, WrestleMania thing now, you know, th- this year, and like they they you know everything went silent. And you had, can you smell <laughs> the rock is cooking? And then right. it comes out, man. And the whole place goes crazy. And yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a mainstream celebrity now on a right. tangent out there as far as they go. But uh, as far as popularity, but I mean, you still got this dude that I remember the first time he was on wrestling, we started watching it comes out. Nobody knew who he was, but he had that. Can you smell And he's like, Oh, Hey man, this guy's going, you know, all right. And then here we are, man. Back, you know, Back when uh, what was it Stone Cold? Yeah, Stone Cold Steve, oh, man, Austin three sixteen, yeah, exactly. And dude, yeah. whenever he, I was watching a thing about him on A and E, and when he came out with that, like when he, that's that's when it, that's when he just took off. When he yeah. did Austin three sixteen, it because yeah. Stone Cold says so. Like ticket yeah. sales. I, where did this thumbs down go on my screen? Did I don't you know. Do I don't know. I did you do like, that, Larry? Like, there, there's a bubble. <laughs> what, was, bubble. what was that about? I said, you uh, are. <laughs> I mean, me and you are the only ones here. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there was one wrestler, though. 
it made me want to get up and headbutt, headbutt some folks every time I saw him. The <laughs> ultimate warrior. He'd oh, get, yeah. He'd run him down there, and I'd be like, <laughs> go get up in the living room. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That, and that dude, like, till to this day, like, when I go hunt with Brantley Gilbert, every mm-hmm. time he's like, dude, if we're put face paint on today, I'm ultimate warrior. Like yeah. that's his go-to. He's like, I'm painting up. Ultimate. I was like, dude, you paint all you want to. I ain't wearing that crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But man, I don't know. This stuff like that just brings back memories of you know good times and stuff. And nowadays, it seems like you know we get caught up working too much and we don't remember. You have to trigger yeah. those good time memories. You know, like heck, Kevin and I was uh, we were somewhere the other day. I think it was an ATA show, and we we were talking to a guy that we'd actually hunted with a long time ago. And I mean, I remembered it, but I didn't remember it. And then he was like, yeah, man, you remember when we da 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 And I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> what, what? What? Well, how did I forget this stuff? You know, I mean, I, it's pretty bad when you, I guess you, you, I can still remember all my deer and turkeys in here. You can come point one out and I can tell you the story about that. But like, remember, like, remember that time me and you went turkey hunting together? Right, <laughs> you exactly. Know? Right. Remember that? Remember like some of those, but there's some stuff in there that's just like gray now. I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> Yeah, no know, doubt. Dude. It's a mess. Well, oh, Braun Strowman was at the uh, whatever that Strowman. Uh, Braun Strowman, he was at the ATA. Uh, the Who's that? WWE or F, whatever it is now, wrestler. I mean, yeah. he was at the ATA show. Braun Strowman or whatever. He's, I mean, I'm talking a giant. I he is a I giant human being. Yeah, oh, I, I, I believe we, we we could have tag teamed and got him. I think. Larry. I mean, I was thinking, I was thinking about it. I was. I, I put him like in broke neck, broke neck chicken yeah. wing. Yeah. Make him, make him shut him yeah. down, you know. Oh, oh yeah, shoot! I I'd shot in for a single leg and freaking uh, ooh, the whole place would have shook when he hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! Oh, memories, man, memories. Let's see if there's yeah. anything else on here. Uh, some of these things are kind of long, and I don't really want to get too much more long winded on that. But um, <laughs> let's see. Overkilling does. Do you think it's possible to overkill does? Let's just we'll, we'll we'll throw that one out there now. We'll wind it down after that. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on the property. You know, I mean, yeah. I do think that if if your deer density is limited, yeah, I do think you can. But uh, anymore, I mean, you could gotta know the property and the property around you uh, to be able yeah. to be able to set a quote on on how many does you think's you know uh healthy to sh- you know shoot i guess for the for her health in it but it's hard to find a place to hunt that i feel like anyway where they're not going to replenish themselves yeah. uh you know naturally you know mother nature i mean crap when i was growing up younger i mean i mean shit i couldn't kill nothing enough of them you know <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and see i grew up in the flip side because on like on yeah. my family farm we didn't shoot those for a long time because you didn't see many deer like mm-hmm. I, mean, I went the first time I went yeah. there and sat in a deer stand. I was 15 years old and I saw three does. And yeah, like, man, like that. Like I saw some. That deer. was something, right? And, and now, bro, it's like you can see three. You have to get three out of the way to get in the yeah. stand to see right. a dozen. You know, and um, yeah, it's probably a little bit of our own fault because we we do take some, but um, it's a hard, it's hard to find the right number. You know, really, um. And I'm a fan. I mean, I like to shoot those two different ways. I like long range stuff with my rifle or I like to bow hunt them. That, mm-hmm. That's my two. I don't really yeah. want to walk out there and just shoot a doe at a hundred yards with my rifle. I'd rather let's get her to 20. Let me shoot her with my bow or let me shoot her at 500 with my rifle. And that's just me. Yeah. I just, you know, um, so, yeah. Bit- so to take that to the next step, we actually had some, I had a conversation with a couple other wildlife biologists and stuff talking about what does do you shoot? Do you shoot the big doe or do you shoot the young doe? Uh, and it's it's interesting to hear everybody talk about it. I mean, a lot of uh, the wildlife biologists side of it's like, I'm going to shoot the young doe. The reason for that is because the big doe has a better chance of yielding a healthier fawn the following year for, uh, because the percentage of those does actually dying you know, there's a, a higher percentage of them living than than there's a, of them dying with that. Mm-hmm. If a young doe gets bred, they're they haven't matured enough to be the mother that they they would be the following year. 
you know, so so therefore you're advancing your herd. And then other one, other people are like, I'm gonna shoot the big doe. You know, hey, there's more meat more on meat. Me. Yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> yeah. My my philosophy on does, especially in Georgia, because we can hunt over feeders, mm-hmm. I never shoot the first ones that come in. Yeah. Like the ones that, that come in and they go straight either straight out in the food plot and don't even look around, they just start eating, or if they go to the feeder after it goes off, you know, and just go in there and they're the first ones, I never shoot any of them. I wait on that one that comes out there like she's on crack. And I'm like, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. the one. She's got to go. Because I look yeah. at them, the first does that come out there, most of them will have yearlings with them, or the yearlings will come out first, you know, and the big doe will come out there. But that's my training doe. Like, she's got these yeah. yearlings. Like, she's going to train generations of does and, and button bucks to come and do, like, do the script on the hunting side for me. Keep that food plot with some deer in it. Keep them bucks coming out there. I want the one that's going to come out there and ruin the whole thing. Because then yep. I, I, that's the one that <laughs> she's going to go. I don't give a crap if she's a year old, two years old, or ten years old. When uh, when she she blows, she goes. I mean, that's just yep. that's fact. the one. I, and, and that's and a, me, no, they're harder to kill. For sure. They they are. And the other part of it too is I mean, that brings up a good point for for people that that their first year farm, they're hunting a farm and, and the deer hunting could be tough. Well, you gotta think, okay, you've got those yearlings that if they live, the more you're on that farm, the more condition they get to you. So therefore they're getting more to and then that you know, every year it starts to get a little bit better because the deer get more conditioned to the activity on the farm. And I feel like that's when a lot of this land management stuff is good to have the food and good to have all that. But I do think that to have a good piece of property is knowing how the deer utilize your farm, knowing what's around your farm, and also letting that that young group of deer grow to maturity on your property, you know, while you're there. Cause every year you're going to start seeing it get better and better and better because that's all those young deer know. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, whenever they're born there and they're seeing, they hear and you're on you on the tractor and they're not running out of the country. You're going to, the next year, you're probably going to see more deer not get so boogered up. They may look, you know, mm-hmm. be super nervous that first year, but the next year they're, they're not quite as much as because a lot of times that's all those young deer know. They, they, they're used to it. They're conditioned to it. You're right. And I, I see it now, like some of our, like we've had our property for like five or six years now and uh, not my family farm, but our lease. And we can go in there and we can put feed in feeders, especially like two or three in the afternoon. And by an hour after we leave or less, there's usually deer, does coming yeah. in there to, to eat. They, they yeah. hear us, they've conditioned to say, Hey, look, they're in there probably putting something out. And then they come in there and feed and and, and don't run. They're, they're not going to do that when you go hunting. Like they're mm-hmm. not just, you're not going to just go walk in the stand and, you know, they're just going to come walking right out there because they right. heard you come in there or something. But I mean, you still got to hunt them and they're, they're deer to the core, but um, it does hold them there better. Like you said, when you're not driving in there and they're running for 500, 600 yards yeah. to get away from you, they're just kind of listening, laying low. They know you're not going to mess with them. Then you leave and then they come out. Yeah. That's they get a lot more tolerant. Yeah. Uh, they'll get a lot more tolerant of, of the activity going on in the farm and stuff. Yeah. So, so where a lot of places you go and it's like, man, I just blew the farm up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and the longer that's goes, it's like, no, a lot of times you didn't. Maybe you go hunt a different set or whatever, but you didn't blow the farm up. They're still going to move. Yeah. So anyway, I, we hit the nail on the head with that one is it's all subjective to your property. It's how your mm-hmm. deer act. Um, can you overshoot them? I believe you can overshoot them, but it's not really overshooting them. It's just overpressure. And yep. if you overpressure does, your bucks are going to react to that and, uh, you know, it could cause problems on your property. So just, you just got to sure. be smart. You got to be selective on your harvest, just like you're doing with your bucks. Manage for trophy right. does. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Well, Larry Mac, thank you, buddy, for hopping on here. I try to keep these things kind of short and sweet. So people that are driving home or to, to and from work or whatever, they can listen to it and not have to sit there for another hour with their kids screaming, ready to get out. So they're so right. entertained <laughs> by us. But uh, uh, tell everybody where they can check out Respect the Game. Oh, they can uh, Sportsman's Channel. You can see it on Sportsman's Channel. You can see it about anywhere you can consume outdoor television, all the social media networks, Respect the Game TV. Uh, my personal page, Larry McCoy15 on Instagram, uh, Larry McCoy on Facebook. If you got questions about anything, uh, just shoot me a message. You know, I'll be more than happy to help how I can. Great. Larry's a great resource, especially on the archery side of the world. But good, great guy, good buddy of mine. Glad to have you on here, Larry. I appreciate your time. And, uh, hey, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll do it again. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, bud. Thanks, brother.